Tis the season, guys. I've got all the Christmas apparel out. My grandfather made me all of those. So every year I think of him when I set up my Christmas stuff. Just need to get my lights set up. And we're good to go. I just need some snow. You can't have singing penguins without snow. Good morning, everybody. Just out filling the bird feeder, spending some time with my birds. Got a bunch of chickadees here. Squirrel. He ran when I came outside. We used to not be friends. In this video, I want to talk about creativity. So, we've been doing our transcending series, and I've been telling you guys how good I've been feeling. You know, just uh, full of energy. Um, full of creativity and wanting to share. So I kind of wanted to touch on what creativity means to me. Do I think that through this process my creativity has increased? I don't think it's increased. I think I'm just more in tune with understanding, paying attention to what I want, and that is to create. So over the last month and a half, I have pretty much created a video for you guys every day. That is unsustainable, I know that. I have a real life, right? <laughs> but the urge to get out and produce something, to, to use my imagination and present it to you guys and we all share it and enjoy it, it's very strong. I think that desire has increased through this transcending process. So I wanna to touch on what creativity is. It can be a multitude of things. To me, creativity is to come up with a new idea or form, something that hasn't been done or shown a certain way, to produce something that I didn't have the day before. And, and in my case, as you guys know, it's, it's quite often storytelling, right? So a lot of people would say creativity has an aesthetic side to it. And I agree, I do a lot of artwork. I do a lot of photography. I do a lot of painting, or I used to, uh, drawing. But there's another side to it. You know, it can be a problem solving side, right? P people can be creative problem solvers. So creativity broadly is, it's tapping into an intelligence, your intelligence. I feel it's tapping into the unconscious mind is what I think it is. It's Gary's unconscious mind. Are all people equally creative? No, obviously we know that, right? I had a friend, Pat, in high school. I loved Pat. He was the most athletic guy. He was, he was everything and anything but creative. And Pat got stuck beside me in art class. And I remember Pat laboring for an hour and a half art class one afternoon. We had to do some spontaneous watercolor. And Pat labored. He was a big sports guy. And in the end, he had a goal post on each side and a green field. <laughs> and that was Pat's artwork after an hour and a half. I think he got a five out of 10. <laughs> and I remember that 25 years later. He just, he sweated bullets, he labored. He could not come up with something to put on that page. And I was the kind of guy, I like to watch the other people. I like to feed off their creativity. I had my own. I was always probably, my brother and I being twins were the most creative people I, I knew. I never had a problem coming up with an idea. And, you know, that day, for example, I watched the class. I loved watching other people, what they were producing and creating. A lot of the time you'd see one guy doing something and then it would, it would be like a, a chain of artwork, right? This guy created this flower garden picture and then beside him, this guy had a house with flowers beside Like they're stealing each other's ideas. They don't even know it, right? You know, and, and I would love to watch that and see what was happening, what was being created and then try to come up with something completely different on my own. And I, I remember what I did that day. I took my white piece of paper and I put a black line on a 45 degree angle and I just took all my colored paints and I splattered them all over the, the page and I took my hand and I went and I, and I smeared it. And so the teacher came over and she's like, I don't know what that is. She said, it, it's, it's very pretty, the colors are nice, but I don't know what that is. And I just looked at her and I said, it's bug on a windshield. You know, that's what it was. <laughs> and it only took me two minutes to do it because I was enjoying everybody else 
and their creating process. So where I'm going with this is I feel that not everyone is as creative as everyone else. We all have a little bit in us, but I find that the more we get in touch with our spiritual side, the more that creative energy is available to us, right? If you've always been a creative person, then you're going to have the desire to share more. And my desire to share has just skyrocketed in the last six, seven months. And that's a big part of it I want to touch on as well is the sharing right? Um, the, the creative mind set that I have is not just to create something and put it away and fill a journal, for example, right? I guess there are people that do create that way. They, they write things, they journal things. Um, scrapbooking maybe is another one where you're doing that and you're not really showing a lot of other people. You're just putting it on the shelf and you're moving on to something else. You're using just as much creative energy. I get that. But in my case, the desire to create is also tied. It's married to my desire to share. And otherwise, I wouldn't have a successful YouTube channel. And I consider us a success, right? For me, it's that desire to create as well as to share. If I analyze what creative is, think of children, right? Children don't have the wisdom, knowledge base, the intelligence that an adult does. And yet they enjoy and love creating as much as any adult. More. More than many adults. What do kids want to do all the time? Here's some crayons and a piece of paper. That child will be entertained for hours. I always was. My kids always were. Um, most kids are. When you go to the daycares and things, you see them. They have art time. They have creative time, right? And kids love that. Legos, right? That was another thing. Creating, using your imagination to create with Tinker Toys, Legos, um, connects. There was all these cool toys that if you had any kind of imagination, you know, you could build the you could build anything you wanted, right? And I've always had that ability to pull something into reality from nothing. And I think it comes from the unconscious mind, my connection to my energy on the other side. I don't know. So not only have I been practicing meditating lately to get in touch with my spiritual side, I've also done sessions where I just try to get in touch with my creative side, right? And I think a lot of people do that, um, that are in the business when they, they say, oh, I have writer's block and I'm trying to work through it. They don't even realize what they're doing. They're getting in touch with their true self and saying, I need ideas, I need clarity, I need imagination, creativity, I need that energy. And they, they draw it to themselves. I think we all have that ability. I know I have that ability. I've always done it, but I've never thought of it in terms of creative energy. So as I said earlier, when I'm talking to about creative energy, I think it's the same source energy that makes up our spirituality. So I, I don't know what to call that energy, but I think it's all one in the same. I'm pretty sure after meditating on it the last few weeks, it's all one in the same. And because of my experiences in my life where I say I've always been in touch with, you know, uh, talking to people from the other side in my mind and working out problems by talking to the universe. Again, I'm just getting in touch with my unconscious mind. We're going to do an episode on that eventually. I don't know what to call that. I don't know how to formulate that into something, but creativity is part of it. Now, is creativity a separate thing? I don't know. I don't, I don't think it is. I don't know. I could be wrong. What do you guys think? Is the creative energy the same as spiritual energy? Let me know what you think below. So when I say you know, we all have creative energy. We do. But then I think of the animals and all the things, you know, that birds, lizards, anything and everything that's not human. 
I wonder about these things. I don't think they have or use creative energy like in the way that we do. Like we will create art. We will create things to enjoy aesthetically. Ah, this is pleasing. We did this just as, an, as a form of enjoyment or entertainment. My wife and I went to a play the other night. Uh, I forget the name of it. <laughs> it was two Canadian actors. Uh, it was pretty funny. Uh, middle Raged. Middle Raged. That's what it was. A couple of actors out of Toronto. They're doing the Northern Ontario circuit. It, it was pretty good. But again, that's another form of creativity, right? They're writing, they're joking, they're laughing, then they're presenting it, right? It's That's all part of it. Animals and things, you know, my, my little birds here, I love them. To me, they don't exhibit any creativity. There's no, it's just a basic survival. Everything that is done is done to survive and reproduce and carry on genetic information. So I am, as you guys know, a believer of evolutionary biology. More so now in my mid 40s, I'm becoming a believer in creationism. And that's been a long time coming. We've talked about that. But whatever creativity that humans get, they don't get. So, you know, we don't know the mind of animals, but does that mean that they don't have any spirituality? I don't think so. I don't think Gage lays around wondering what's going to happen to him, uh, you know, in 10 years when he's old and gray and finally says, geez, I've had enough of going up and down these stairs. I don't think an animal ever ponders that. So for me, it's kind of weird. It's weird to think that, you know, if we are created and we're all created by a great or something, why is that one of the greatest joys to me is creativity and arts, uh, both visual and written. And so these poor guys are missing out. You know, I just, these are the things I wonder about when I, when I think of the grand scheme of God created all of us. To me, that means they're different. Do animals not have a soul? I don't know. I've taken a philosophy course on whether animals have feeling or not. And I'll tell you again, over the course of that class, see, I was going to say over the course of that course, I actually kind of changed my mind back. I was, you know, uh, 28, 29. And that was for one of my university, uh, for my biology. I took philosophy and it was about, um, do animals have feelings? And I kind of argued, no, in the beginning, I, you know, I'd never really thought about it was the problem. And because I mean, I hunt animals, we grew up on the farm, we eat animals, and that would pose a dilemma to me to think about that, right? So, but then after, you know, going through that whole six month, whatever it is, semester, I kind of came to realize Animals do have feelings. And if you watch the animals, I've watched the deer in my yard for years now. Since we moved here eight years ago, I have deer in my yard every day and I watch them, I study them. And I've seen the mother teaching the young, you know, uh, buck the young away and say, no, you're not getting any more milk. Go over to a tree, pull down branches, look at the young one and say, eat these. Like basically teaching them enough milk, eat this, right? They're teaching. They are communicating and it's amazing when you see something like that, you go, oh, it just kind of, it clicks. When you have your pets, right? I know Gage's moods as well as he knows mine. Just the little nuances, the way he moves, the way he, uh, his ears are up or down or he turns his head, he's, he, you know. Now he watches me. It's amazing. If, if you're a pet owner, you already know this, but if you're not, he knows everything I do before I'm going to do it. Apparently, before I get out of my chair, when I'm editing for you guys in the morning or I have a coffee and I read through all the comments from the day before, I don't even realize that I'm about to get up out of my chair and the next step is take Gage for a walk or whatever we do. He knows because as soon as I shift a certain way in the chair, boom, he's up standing there waiting, ready to go. And then I started paying attention going, what's he doing? Oh, he knows before I know. <laughs> like, I guess subconsciously I'm thinking here, I'm getting ready to shut down my YouTube page take my coffee cup, go upstairs and away we go. He already knows that. He's, he's watching me that intently. He knows. So, I mean, we all know pets and animals have intelligence. We all know that they, sh they share and they, I, I believe they love, right? Uh, I know they do. The mother deer loves the baby deer and, and you see it when they, they guard them and protect them. I took pictures of a freshly born fawn 
minutes old. I actually watched the fawn hit the ground. I had just happened to be driving down my driveway with a great big camera. I had come back from an outing and there was this deer giving birth in my driveway. And they do that because here where all the houses are, they're safe. There's no bears, there's no... So they all come here to birth uh, the young in our neighborhood. And I watched that deer give birth. I got a little too close. So I was taking pictures, fantastic pictures of this little baby fawn. He couldn't even stand up. His legs were all wobbly. But the mother came right, charging right back in, stomped the ground, snorting. I got too close. I got about 10 feet away. Too close. <laughs> you know, it was one of my pet deer. I just, again, human assumption. Oh, we're okay. You know I'm not going to hurt you. No, they don't know that. They just, they trust to a point, right? But my point is that there is a connection between all animals, just like there is humans. But I don't think they have creativity. They have love. They have feelings. I don't think they have creativity. So... In that sense, there's an argument that it is something different than our true unconscious mind, right? Because animals, I feel, are missing part of what humans have. It's hard to put my finger on what I'm trying to explain to you guys. I hope you understand what I'm saying. But uh, as part of my spiritual transcending journey, creativity is just, it's, it's rising with my connection to myself. Any of you guys going through this? Are you feeling this? Are you paying attention to that? If you haven't paid attention to your creative side, stop and think about it. Meditate on it. Early in the morning, I find my creativity is just bubbling and boiling over. Before I get up in the morning, if I wanted to plan out a whole video session or do, I started a new series, Gary's Shorts. It's coming up this week. Um, yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> Again, these, these ideas, four o'clock in the morning, that idea just popped in my head. You know, I want to do a new series. What do I want to do? Gary Shorts. So you guys will see that this week. If you guys follow my Facebook page, you've already seen the first one. So we're going to be doing some of that. Again, creativity bubbling and boiling over as I transcend. I hope you guys are in touch with yourselves, creative self as well. And I hope we're all transcending at the same great pace. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next adventure.